Affordable consideration provided by... With less moderate to severe eczema, why hide your skin? If you can help heal your skin from within. With Dupixent, adults saw long-lasting, clearer skin and significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. We will, we will rock you. Mike, drop. Our on-set exclusive with the stars of the Queen family sing-along. Plus, we're at the Hollywood premiere of Red Notice with Ryan Reynolds, Gal Gadot, and Hawaii's own Dwayne Johnson. And Magnum P.I. Zachary Knighton is taking you both yep. canoe surfing. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. did that go? Mm -hmm. It was okay. It went. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. no, we had a great time. We had Listen, a great time. <laughs> thanks to our friend and our family member, Vanessa Lachey. Yes. We are Thank so you. proud of you. Thank you. We love watching you on TV doing big things. Thank Absolutely. you, man. I appreciate so proud. it. So it proud always feels good to come home to you guys. You can always come home, yeah, for sure. You can. And you can catch Vanessa's boss moves every Monday night on NCIS Hawaii. Well, y'all know it happening now. We're feeling the effects of today's cold front. We have more rain to talk about along with just how cool it'll be the next couple of days. See you in a bit. And that cold front keeping firefighters busy. As thunderstorms rolled in, lightning setting an area home on fire. The latest next. Now that young kids are able to get the COVID-19 shot, what one local team is doing for those who are still hesitant about getting the vaccine. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, the cold front has moved in. It is feeling chilly outside right now. Yeah, but how long will this fall feeling stick around? Let's check in with Adam Kasky for your full weather update. Adam. Yeah, yeah, well, we're going to feel it through the day tomorrow even a bit as we get into Friday. I want to talk about radar at the moment, where the heaviest rain is, where the problematic showers are for travel, particularly moving through DeWitt County up toward Hallettsville, Quero, even Yorktown. This is the heaviest rain with lightning and thunder and maybe even some pea sized hail associated with it. This is moving through Shiner and Moulton as well, though not quite as heavy in northwestern Lavaca County and exiting Gonzales County. Locally, not a lot to talk about. You get up near Canyon Lake, just north near Fisher. That's where we have some moderate to heavy rain, but very brief pockets of moderate to heavy rain from Comfort uh, over toward Canyon Lake and Fisher. Locally, just a few hit or miss sprinkles out there right now. Still some damp roadways possible. But overall, the evening commute as we go forward isn't going to be all that damp, with the exception of some of these passing showers that will periodically come and go. The heaviest action, though, southwest of San Antonio as well, Crystal City to Carrizo Springs. I anticipate more development through the evening and the night with more, more scattered showers going forward. Temperatures have taken a hit. Lakey at 57, Floresville 57, Leon Springs nearly half an inch of rainfall. Bernie picked up eight tenths of an inch in Lavernia, about 1.1. More on the rain for tonight and tomorrow, along with our cool temperatures and how cool it'll be tomorrow coming up. Thank you, Adam. And that rain creating both a problem and a solution this afternoon at a home on the far west side. San Antonio firefighters believe a lightning strike set off a fire in the 400 block of Bobcat Hollow. It happened about one. Firefighters tell us the flames spread from the roof to the attic. They say that the rain helped, though, to put the flames out quickly. Two people were at home at the time. They made it out safely, and they also rescued one animal. A vaccine hesitancy is not a new thing. People feeling hesitant to get the COVID-19 vaccine themselves now have the same concerns for their children. It's why the city of San Antonio is making an effort to ease people's fears. Tiffany Huertas took a stroll with Metro Health's outreach team as they visited a West Side neighborhood to encourage families to go ahead and get the shot. Have you got vaccinated already? Yeah. All right, you know anybody that might need to be vaccinated? Uh, no. no, all right, have a good day. Door to door. Can we hit the street and the, the street back over here? And block to block. Okay, all right, thank you. The city of San Antonio's community health and prevention team spent Wednesday morning talking to people living on the west side about the COVID-19 vaccine and explained that kids ages 5 to 11 can now get the shot. It has been a, an area where they've not been getting the vaccine, those hesitancy. We're here at the Frank Garrett Community Center. She didn't even know that the clinic's right across the street from her. So. Although Jakia Williams lives across from this vaccine site. I haven't even got vaccinated yet. And while her daughter is still too young to get the shot, Williams says she will consider it and wants to learn more about the vaccine. My mom, and my dad got vaccinated. So, I mean, that's 
That should give me an extra boost. The team says one of the reasons for vaccine hesitancy in communities like this one is the lack of information. They don't know what's in the actual vaccine, and, and that's where we try to kind of just educate them. The team is targeting homes and businesses and says this time around, they are seeing more people interested in getting their children vaccinated. They're seeing that they're vaccinated. There was not a big deal. They're, they're, they're fine. Williams says it's great the city is reaching out to people in her neighborhood. I feel like we should get like more information and then most people will get start getting vaccinated. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. By the way, Metro Health plans to start offering the vaccine in clinics starting November 10th. They say here in San Antonio, there are more than 332,000 children ages 5 to 11 who are now eligible to get the vaccine. You can find more information on our website, ksat.com. And U.S. health experts also want to debunk those vaccine myths and ease the minds of parents who are concerned about the COVID-19 vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. A recent survey conducted by the Kaiser Family Foundation showed 66% of parents are worried the vaccine will harm their child's future fertility. But the American Academy of Pediatrics, along with the CDC, are all saying this is not a concern, and they insist that the vaccine will not have a negative impact. I would be the first person who would jump up and down and make a fuss if there was a connection here. There simply is not, and we don't need to worry about this one. Dr. Talib also mentioned the vaccine will not affect puberty or menstrual cycles. Any parent who does have concerns about the vaccine is being urged to reach out, talk to their child's doctor. New at five outrage. That's the most common reaction after an anti-Semitic sign goes up on a Southwest San Antonio business. Sadly, it's a trend we've been seeing in recent weeks across our city. Our Stephanie Jimenez joins us live from where that sign was hung up and has details. Am I right that this is an auto shop we're talking about? Yeah, that's right, Steve. So we're on Quintana Road directly across the street from the budget automotive repair shop. This is where a sign that was anti-Semitic making light of how Jews were killed during the Holocaust hung for days, possibly even a week. So I'll step out of the way so that you can take a good look at this establishment. Now you'll notice that sign is no longer there. However, there are pictures of it all over social media. We spoke with neighbors. They confirm it was here. And we also spoke with staff with the council member who represents this district who says that that sign was up as late as yesterday. Now, we're not going to show you that sign, but this is coming amid several anti-Semitic incidents in San Antonio these past few weeks. Last week, neighbors in a north side area found anti-Semitic flyers on their driveways. They were disturbed. And days after that, an anti-Semitic group holding anti-Jewish signs gathered across the street from the Jewish community campus. Now, this behavior has upset leaders who say that this is not accepted or tolerated in our city. Council member Terry Castillo released a statement saying, quote, we are horrified by the anti-Semitic signage that appeared this week on a South Side business. This hate speech has no place in our neighborhoods. Now, here's the thing. We did knock on the door here of this business. We tried to call this establishment. No one's picked up. We're still waiting to hear back from the owner to hear what his side of the story is, although there's no excuse for that behavior. Now, we're live here in Southwest San Antonio. Stefania Jimenez. KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Steph. Now we have an update on the death of a man whose body was found in the San Antonio River on Monday. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying him as Rolando Gracia Jr. Investigators say the 32 year old's body was found on Monday morning, partially in the river on South Alamo behind the Blue Star Arts Complex. According to the medical examiner, his official cause of death is being investigated. He tried carjacking a woman and then he shot her in the face, but he did not get away. This morning, San Antonio police identifying that suspect as 18 year old Julio Cesar Rivera II. County officials releasing his mugshot this afternoon. This all unfolding just before nine last night. We first told you about it on the night beat. Our Jonathan Cotto takes us back to the scene where a witness described those frightening moments. This is 18 year old Julio Cesar Rivera II. San Antonio police say he's the man who shot a 27-year-old woman in the parking lot of this grocery store at the Alamo Quarry Market just before 9 p.m. Police say the woman was leaving the store and was getting into her car when Rivera approached her. According to police, the suspect shot the victim in the face while attempting to steal her car. 
One woman inside the store witnessing the frightening scene unfold. I was about to check out um, at the Whole Foods um, counter, and um, when I was right before that, I heard someone come yelling, help me, help me, um, and I wasn't sure if it was a joke or, you know, especially it was just Halloween. But um, so then a, a staff came and said, hurry and check out or leave. You can just leave your stuff. And then that's when... Um, I, we saw the girl. According to investigators, Rivera ran away. But he was eventually caught by officers outside of this movie theater. Police say Rivera still had a handgun on his person, but he was able to be arrested without any trouble. Rivera is charged with aggravated assault. The victim was rushed to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. To an update now on the upcoming murder trial of Andre McDonald. He's the man accused of murdering his wife, Andreen. Today, prosecutors requesting to delay the trial yet again. The request coming just two days before their deadline to sort through newly submitted evidence. Let's put that in perspective. There's about 100,000 new pieces of evidence to sort through in all. Prosecutors asking to add more evidence to the case before it goes to trial. And today, defense attorney John Convery says... They cannot defend McDonald till they have all the evidence presented. The hearing ended with the judge granting a bond reduction from $550,000 to only $250,000. No word on whether McDonald will actually be able to bond out. A woman now in custody after she shot a man on the northwest side yesterday. 25-year-old Sabrina Angel is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. San Antonio police say that she shot a 45-year-old man twice at the Gardenwood Apartments around 3 yesterday. That's in the 1300 block of Gardena Street. The victim is expected to be okay. Investigators are not sure what his relationship is with her. The San Antonio Police Department asking for your help. They're trying to track down a hit and run suspect. It happened after a shooting at a restaurant on Marbach Road last week. It's across from John Jay High School. You may remember it. SAPD says the shooting started with a fight. When officers got there, they found 33 year old Sergio Enrique Cortez lying near the road. They say he was walking near the restaurant and was hit by a black vehicle. The driver did not stop to help. At last check, he remains in the hospital with serious injuries. If you have any information about this, you can call SAPD at 210-207-7385. Ursula, we have a major crash here on Loop 410 westbound at Jackson Keller. You can see emergency crews on the scene, but it looks like the good news here is that they're going to be clearing this soon. We just saw a bunch of fire trucks actually leave the scene here, but you can see lane blockage there as cars come on here for a while. This whole thing was blocked, so you can imagine what that's doing to the travel time in this area. 27 minutes from 281 to I-10. Also some delays heading eastbound on 410, but nothing like we're seeing on the westbound lanes this evening. Also seeing some delays on 151. Once again, 15 minutes now between Loop 410 and 1604. Thank you so much, Sam. New at five, your fall to-do list. It's the perfect time to tackle those necessary home fix-its that may have slipped through the cracks during the summer. So where do you begin? 12 on your size, Marilyn Mortz runs down the fall chores you can't afford to ignore. Ashley Retagliano just moved from an apartment to her first house. It's exciting, um, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. We do have a pretty large property that needs a decent amount of maintenance, but definitely needs a lot more work. It may not be fun, but some chores can save you money in the long run. Start with your lawn. To avoid paying to patch your lawn come spring, Consumer Reports home experts suggest you avoid leaving matted leaves on the grass. Using your lawnmower's mulching mode returns nutritious bits of leaves and grass back into the soil, plus it saves your back from raking. And no leaf bags to buy. Leaves don't just fall in your yard. Leaves, sticks, and debris can clutter gutters, causing rain to overflow and pool around your home's foundation and even seep inside. 
The safest way to clear gutters is from the ground, using an extension for your hose or even an attachment for your leaf blower or wet vac. To protect your foundation, gutters should drain at least five feet from the house. Using binoculars, inspect your roof for cracked or curled shingles. Small leaks can cause big damage inside your house. A pro can inspect the flashing around your chimney or any skylights and catch any leaks before they get worse. It's also time to have your furnace inspected and replace filters. Dirty filters can lead to high power bills and repairs. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. It's an annual effort to serve the community, and this year the Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner will happen with a twist. What this year's event will look like and who they're partnering with to make it happen. It is that time again. Preparations for the annual Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner officially beginning today. Yeah, but this year things will go with a similar look to last year. The Walmart Foundation and Meals on Wheels, along with many other organizations, joining efforts to help deliver this year's meals. Since the late 70s, senior citizens, underprivileged families, and the homeless community in San Antonio are served on Thanksgiving Day. It's something that takes a lot of time and dedication from everyone involved. Our entire uh, Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving Committee really pulled together to make this event a great success. And so we're very, very grateful for that. Each year, about 25,000 people in our city are served. If you'd like to learn more about the dinner, just visit our website, ksat.com. We're working on several stories right now for the 6 o'clock newscast. Myra Arthur joins us from the newsroom to talk about what's ahead. Myra, there are two stories especially that are going to speak to parents tonight. I, I think you're exactly right, Steve. From a father's heartfelt plea to the COVID-19 vaccine for children. We will start there with that story. You know, by now, the CDC has authorized the shots for kids ages 5 to 11. Now comes the effort to get children that vaccination. Today at 6, we're talking about San Antonio ISD and their efforts to do that by partnering with a local allergy clinic. Our Alicia Barrera has the details on several child vaccination events that are planned in the days ahead. Now, this next story centers around that plea from a desperate father. It is one that he hopes will save his life. Please, please donate a kidney for me, uh, just for me or in my family, just so I can be there for my son. Eric Pinsick found out that he was in end stage renal failure when his baby boy was just three months old. <clears throat> Excuse me, he and his wife now using social media to try to get him that organ donation. They're actually part of a program through University Health focused on that, using the power of social media and public relations to connect donors and recipients and save lives. And you can help. Those stories and more are coming up at six o'clock. Stephen Ursula will send it back to you. Thanks, Myra. Taking a look outside, we've got uh, Sky 12 over the city. Everything is changing so dramatically already. Uh, I hope we're going to dry out a little bit. That was a lot of rain. Yeah, so good boost for the aquifer. It's still responding to the recent rainfall, but already today up nearly half a foot. And by the way, we are no longer in stage one watering restrictions, though. This time of year, you usually don't have to water much anyway. Grass gets dormant soon. Okay, so look at temperatures. Let's talk temperatures. Tomorrow, a high temperature of 55. Friday, we'll get back in the 60s, but not back up to 70 degrees until this upcoming weekend. So we're going to feel the chill in the air tomorrow. We'll be jacket weather all day long. Let's take a look at our day so far. You know, we're in the 50s now. It was warmer this morning than it is now. Earlier today, we were up near 70. Now we're down in the 50s. Most importantly, the rainfall. 0.13 inches measured at the airport, but significantly higher amounts elsewhere. As usual, rainfall is spotty. It gets streaky, particularly southeastern Kerr County. Just Outside of Kerrville, nearly three inches estimated by the radar. You get up near Bulverde, about nine tenths of an inch estimated. Cuero, over half an inch. Floresville, about an inch. And you get on the south side of San Antonio, south of Highway 90 here, all the way through 410 and 1604, and between about a half inch to just over an inch. Near Mission San Jose, about 1.2. 
Mission San Juan about 0.8. So some healthy accumulations, particularly on the south side of San Antonio today. Here's the big picture and you see the showers and the heavy thunderstorms east of town now moving through Lavaca County, particularly DeWitt County. Cuero, you're just about on the back side of the same with Yorktown. You're getting that good soaking now. It's headed toward Victoria and still some healthy rain falling around Lavaca County and Hallettsville, but eventually moving out locally. We do have a few little showers that just popped up and we'll continue to see these little showers popping up as we go through the evening and night. Here's our future cast indicating more development. We're in agreement with that. We'll have some energy sliding overhead and that'll just keep developing these scattered intermittent showers and maybe a few thunderstorms, but mainly just some light to moderate rainfall periodically tonight and then tapering off during the morning commute tomorrow and then notice noon just low clouds tomorrow. A little gusty out there. Winds out of the north at 10 to 20 and it's going to stay that way tonight through tomorrow. We'll have some gusts up to 20 to maybe 25 miles per hour periodically. Let's talk temperatures 52 in Comfort, 54 Bandera, 59 Pleasanton. But look at Laredo and Corpus Christi at 80 degrees for their readings now. So obviously that cold front pushing southward in the 50s this evening and tonight with some scattered rain developing tomorrow. We start the day at 49, only make it to 55 with low clouds all day and then sunshine returns for Friday into the upcoming weekend as temps rebound. All right, looks great for the weekend. Thank you. All right, want to talk about rebounding? So what Adam said lead us right into the AT&T Center and Greg Simmons where the Spurs are hoping to rebound Greg. Yeah, and if they're going to do so tonight, they're going to have to do it without one of their starters. Jakob Pearl is out. We got that word late this afternoon due to the NBA health and safety protocol. So they lose their big man against their big rematch with the Mavs tonight. We'll have a live preview from the AT&T Center. Plus, is Dak good to go? Coming up. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to the AT&T Center, where tonight the Spurs return home to play host to their I-35 rivals, the Dallas Mavericks. Now, the Spurs are coming off their worst game of the season. That's according to their own head coach, Greg Popovich, after getting blown out by the Pacers on Monday in Indiana, 131 to 118. In that game, the Spurs were outscored the first quarter, 43-33. It was downhill from there, leading only once in that game, 11 to 10 in the first quarter. This is also the Spurs' second time they've met the massive season back in October the 28th. They lost in Dallas, 104-99. Coming off a road trip where we um, had them at their place, so I uh, got to see how they play a little bit. Um, had a close one with them, but we feel we could have pulled out, so hopefully uh, we make a couple um, more plays on the stretch and able to get the win tonight. There is a matchup tonight. Keep in mind, as we told you earlier, Jakob Pertl is out tonight due to the NBA's health and safety protocols. Tip time at 7.30. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys had a very light practice today following their Sunday night victory in Minnesota, 20-16 over the Vikings. Head coach Mike McCarthy announced today that starting quarterback Dak Prescott has been cleared to practice at full speed, but due to the limited nature of today's workout, won't be hard-pressed. McCarthy was asked how he will evaluate to see if Dak is good to go this Sunday against the Broncos. Just really how he comes out of today's practice, you know. I mean, obviously, it's it's no different than any player once he goes through the, you know, uh, you know, release the play through the rehab process. So he's he's crossed that hurdle, and so you know, we'll he has a certain number of reps he'll take today, and we'll evaluate in the morning. All right, doesn't look like left tackle Tyron Smith will be available for Sunday showdown due to a bone spur in his left ankle. Kickoff is at noon at AT&T Stadium. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves. Won the World Series for the first time since 1995. That's after they were able to roll over the Astros in Houston in game six, seven to nothing. The Braves jumped on the Astros early and never looked back. Jorge Soler, the World Series MVP, was able to get the party started with a three-run blast to take a three to nothing lead in the third. And then the Braves produce a three-run fifth inning. Dansby Swanson joined the home run derby to lift the Braves to a 5 to nothing lead and eventually the shutout victory. Don't forget to join us tonight on the Night Beat for all the highlights of the Spurs game tonight against the Mavs, and we'll take you inside the locker room. We'll wrap it up after this. Scattered showers out there right now, even one approaching the airport and moving through the medical center along I-10. And we're going to continue to see this kind of activity coming and going through the night and just through the morning commute tomorrow, then cloudy and cool tomorrow. We'll be in the 50s most of the day, sunny, back to the 60s by Friday and this weekend, 70s. See you at 6 o'clock.